2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ping pong balls are great for ping pong, but they're not for bowling. Not enough momentum. Oh, a scientist. The bowling balls are about three kilograms. They're heavy enough, and we can get them moving fast enough so that they have enough momentum to knock down all the pins at once. That is, uh, if we can hit it just right. <laughs> well, that was pretty good. But suppose we had a heavier ball, like four or five kilograms. Then it would have enough momentum to knock down every <laughs> pin every time. Now, that would be cool. Hey, Bill. Huh? Catch! Oh. And now, great moments in momentum. All right, how's it going everybody? Today we're going to be talking about momentum and what momentum is, is going to be mass in motion. So what is that exactly? Well, that means that there's a relationship between mass and velocity. Momentum describes that relationship. It describes how much stuff I have, how much mass, and how fast that mass is moving. Awesome. All right, so uh, we would write this in equation form. It would be uh, P equals MV. Now we're talking about P, we're not talking about power, we're talking about momentum. So the P is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a lowercase P opposed to an uppercase P. So I'm going to write this out here. P, and it's lowercase, so you want to write there, equals mass times velocity. Not, yeah, mass times velocity. So, we have mass. Mass is measured in kilograms. We have velocity, which is measured in meters per second. So, if we multiply these two together, our, our momentum is going to be measured in kilograms, meters per second. So, our unit is going to be like that for that one. So, we're going to talk about vector now. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! A vector is a magnitude and a direction. So momentum is a mass. We, change, we can change that mass if we have different objects that have different masses, like an elephant versus a squirrel. Okay. So the magnitude comes from our mass, and then the direction comes from the velocity. The mass has to be moving in some direction. So that's where we get that vector from. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move on to a quick practice problem. Now, uh, the, one of the sample problems says a 3,000 kilogram elephant is chasing a one kilogram squirrel across the road at a velocity of five meters per second to the west. What is the momentum of the elephant uh, if the squirrel is running at seven uh, meters per second west? What is the squirrel's momentum? So we have our first, we have, uh, first thing we want to do is list out all of our variables. So what variables do we have? Well, we know that the squirrel has a mass of one kilogram. It's a very small squirrel. And we also know that the elephant has a mass of 3,000 kilograms. So we'll go ahead and write this out here. Mass of the elephant equals 3,000. Uh huh. And the mass of the squirrel equals 1. Okay, does it give us anything else? 
we know the velocity. The elephant is moving at a velocity of five meters per second. It's chasing the squirrel for some reason. I wonder why he's doing that. The elephant is chasing the squirrel at a velocity of five meters per second to the west. Remember, we have to have a magnitude and a direction. The elephant is moving west. That's its direction. So the velocity of the elephant is going to be five, five meters per second. Yeah. Does it give us anything else? Um, that's it for the elephant's momentum, but for the second part, we need to know that the squirrel is moving seven meters per second west. So we'd go about doing the, uh, the equation previously, which was momentum equals mass times velocity. Now, is there an easier way to go about writing this? Yeah, our handy dandy triangle. You want to go ahead and show us? Mm hmm. So, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Since mass and velocity are going to be multiplied by each other, I'm going to put them next to each other in the triangle. Mass and velocity are next to each other because they get multiplied by each other. And then momentum, my little p, goes on the top. So let's talk about, let's, let's do first, uh, one animal at a time. So when it talks about the elephant, we want to go ahead and multiply the elephant's mass times its velocity. So what is 3,000 uh, 3, times 5? 15,000. I'm going to go little p is equal to 3, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> screen started moving. 3,000 times 5, so my momentum is equal to 15,000. I don't need those, uh, that parentheses up there, I'm going to erase that. There we go. 15,000 kilogram meters per second. And now, now that we've uh, finished the elephant, let's go ahead and talk about the squirrel. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to multiply our mass times the velocity. So how would that look like? All right. Well, make sure you get this uh, part written down because I'm going to erase it to make some room. I'm going to erase the uh, elephant's momentum. There we go. All right. On to the squirrel. It works the same way. I take my mass and my velocity and I multiply them together. The squirrel's mass was one and he was running away from the elephant at a velocity of seven meters per second. So that's really easy. We got a momentum of the squirrel, seven kilogram meters per second. So what you need to notice here is that the relationship between mass and velocity affects momentum. Momentum depends on your mass and your velocity. Animals or objects with more mass will have more momentum, even though it might be moving at a slower velocity. The squirrel had a very, very tiny mass compared to the elephant, and it had a much smaller momentum. So momentum depends on mass and velocity.